Leadership is perhaps one of the most misunderstood subjects in business. Leadership has nothing to do with rank. I know many people who sit at the highest levels of an organization who are not leaders. We do as they tell us because they have authority over us, but we do not trust them and we do not follow them. I also know people at low levels of organizations that have no formal authority, but they've made a choice, the choice to look after the person to the left of them, the choice to look after the person to the right of them, and we would trust them and follow them anywhere. Leadership is the awesome responsibility to see those around us rise. You, every one of us, can choose to be the leader we wish we had. We lead our teams and we can lead our clients when we decide that we will do everything in our power to see them rise, to see them achieve their ambitions and their dreams. And this is what servant leadership means. I serve your dream rather than you serve my bottom line. Take a good person and put them in a bad environment and that person will do bad things. You can take a person who maybe this, the group doesn't trust, maybe they've even performed bad acts. You put them in a good environment and they're capable of turning their lives around and becoming remarkable members of society. In other words, it's not the person, it's the environment. Leaders are responsible for that environment. And I think leaders forget that. Leaders think that they're responsible for the results. There's not a leader on the planet that is responsible for the results. A leader is responsible for the people who are responsible for the results. And if you take care of that, take care of the people, take care of the environment, things go just fine. I'm sitting in the back of a taxi with a senior Apple executive, sort of employee number 12 kind of guy, and I decide to stir the pot. And I turn to him and I say, you know, I spoke at a Microsoft summit and they gave me their new Zoom and I have to tell you, it is so much better than your iPod Touch. And he turned to me and said, I have no doubt. Conversation over. <laughs> because the infinite player isn't playing to be number one every day with every product. They're playing to outlast the competition. If I had said to Microsoft, oh, I've got the new iPod Touch, it's so much better than your new Zune, they would have said, can we see it? What does it do? How we have to see it. Because one is obsessed with their competition, the other is obsessed with why they do what they do, the other is obsessed with where they're going. And the reason Apple frustrates their competition is because secretly, they're not even competing against them. They're competing against themselves. And they understand that sometimes you're a little bit ahead and sometimes you're a little bit behind. And sometimes your product is better and sometimes you're not. But if you wake up every single morning and compete against yourself, how do I make our products better than they were yesterday? How do I take care of our customers better than we did yesterday? How do we advance our cause more efficiently, more productively than we did yesterday? How do we find new solutions to advance our calling, our cause, our purpose, our belief, our why every single day? What you'll find is over time, you will probably be ahead more often. Those who play the infinite game understand it's not about the battle, it's about the war. And they don't play to win every day. And they frustrate their competition until their competition drops out of the game. Every single bankruptcy, almost every merger and acquisition is basically a company saying we no longer have the will or the resources to continue to play and we have no choice to either drop out of the game or, or merge our resources with another player so that we can stay in the game. That's what that is. And if you think about the number of bankruptcies and mergers and acquisitions, it's kind of proof that most companies don't even know the game they're in. You want to be a great leader, start with empathy. You want to be a great leader, change your perspective and play the game you're actually playing. Because there are leaders and there are those who lead. Leaders hold a position of power or authority, but those who lead inspire us. Whether they're individuals or organizations, we follow those who lead, not because we have to, but because we want to. We follow those who lead, not for them, but for ourselves. And it's those who start with why 
that have the ability to inspire those around them or find others who inspire them. Bob Chapman, who runs a large manufacturing company in the Midwest called Barry Waymiller, in 2008, he was hit very hard by the recession, and they lost 30 percent of their orders overnight. Now, in a large manufacturing company, this is a, this is a big deal, and they could no longer afford their, la their labor pool. They needed to save $10 million. So, like so many companies today, the board got together and discussed layoffs. And Bob refused. You see, Bob doesn't believe in head counts. Bob believes in heart counts. And it's much more difficult to simply reduce the heart count. And so they came up with a furlough program. Every employee, from secretary to CEO, was required to take four weeks of unpaid vacation. They could take it any time they wanted, and they did not have to take it consecutively. But it was how Bob announced the program that mattered so much. He said, it's better that we should all suffer a little than any of us should have to suffer a lot. And morale went up. They saved $20 million. And most importantly, as would be expected, when the people feel safe and protected by the leadership in the organization, the natural reaction is to trust and cooperate. And quite spontaneously, nobody expected, people started trading with each other. Those who could afford it more would trade with those who could afford it less. People would take five weeks so that somebody else only had to take three. Leadership is a choice. It is not a rank. We call them leaders because they go first. We call them leaders because they take the risk before anybody else does. We call them leaders because they will choose to sacrifice so that their people may be safe and protected and so his, their people may gain. And when we do, the natural response is that our people will sacrifice for us. They will give us their blood and sweat and tears to see that their leader's vision comes to life. And when we ask them, why would you do that? Why would you give your blood and sweat and tears for that person? They all say the same thing. Because they would have done it for me. And isn't that the organization we would all like to work in? Thank you very much. Thank you.